The Dome of the Rock is an Islamic shrine located on the Temple Mount in the Old City of Jerusalem. The Temple Mount where the Dome of the Rock, the Al-Aqsa Mosque and the Golden Gate stands is one of the most precious pieces of land on earth. Recent, so why exactly is this place so fought for? And are there many religious claims that see this place as the cornerstone of all Abrahamic faiths true? What is under this big shiny gold dome? Those are the questions we will try to answer in today's episode. And believe me, there are so many fascinating things I can't wait to share with you. But before we begin, please remember to give a like to this video, subscribe if you haven't done so yet and leave a comment. Those things are really important for me and helps to trigger the YouTube algorithm thanks to which more people can see it when they search the YouTube. With that out of the way, let us begin our investigation. Before I dive into the things we can see when we enter the Dome of the Rock, I want to give a short introduction to the topography of the area we are discussing. The Temple Mount is located on the top of a southeast hill of contemporary East Jerusalem. Beneath the Temple Mount, archaeology has documented the original settlement core of Jerusalem during the Bronze Age and the Iron Ages. In other words, this hill is the original location of the biblical city of David, which David conquered from the Jebusites and made it the capital of the 12 tribes of Israel. The top of this hill is believed to be the Mount Moriah, upon which Abraham faith was tested. In the biblical account, we read that Abraham left his servants, probably in the city of Salem, where future Jebus and then the city of David would be established. He would knew Salem, as in Bereshit chapter 14, we read that Abraham meets Melchizedek, the king and the high priest of Salem. To learn more about Melchizedek, check out my video about him. Abraham then went up to the Mount of Moriah where he was told to sacrifice his son. Mount Moriah was a new place for Abraham, which God showed him. So, it was definitely not Salem. Abraham would not sacrifice his son in the city, but at the mountain top as it was done in those times. Let me stop here for a moment. I don't know what you think, but for me, this is always a very disturbing fragment of the Bible. What was Abraham feeling at that time? How did he feel when his son, his beloved son Isaac, asked him, where is the sacrifice we are going to kill for God? Abraham answered, God will provide. And God did. As Abraham was ready to strike his son Isaac, God sent an angel to stop Abraham and provided a ram that was the sacrifice instead of Isaac. By the way, can you imagine the relation between Isaac and Abraham after this episode of their life? What did Isaac think of his father who was willing to sacrifice him? I don't have answers to those questions, but it must have been very difficult for them. As the Bible story progresses, we hear again about Mount Moriah in the times of King David. As you remember, David was feeling ashamed that he is living in a nice new palace while the Ark of the Covenant is still in the tent. After all, the Ark of the Covenant was God's throne on earth. So David wanted to begin the building of the temple to the God of Israel that would house the Ark of the Covenant. God, however, did not allow David to begin the construction of the temple. Why? Well, 
David was a warrior and killed many people during his life. He was not suitable for such a holy task. Instead, David purchased the threshing floor on Mount Moriah from Aruna the Jebusite. In the book of 2 Samuel chapter 24 verses 18 to 25, we read about this account. We read that David went up, meaning up from the city of David to the hilltop where Aruna had his threshing floor. Now, I sometimes get a comment on my YouTube channel that the field of Aruna, the Jebusite, could not have been on the Temple Mount because it is a rock. Well, yes, under the dome of the rock, there is a rock and we will get to this in the later part of the video, but this is not the location of the threshing floor of Aruna. There are flat spaces on the Temple Mount that could facilitate a threshing floor. In fact, there are trees growing on the Temple Mount. Here you can see a picture of a tractor plowing on the Temple Mount. So those arguments are either made by people who are ignorant or are trying to support their imaginary claim. But let's move on. We read that David buys the field from Aruna and builds an altar to the God of Israel. Later, on this mountain, David's son, Solomon, builds the temple. At the time of the dedication of the temple, Solomon took the Ark of the Covenant out from the city of David to the temple. We can read about this account in 1 Kings chapter 7 and 8 and 2 Chronicles chapter 4 and 5. To learn more about the location of Solomon's temple, please see my latest video on the evidence found on the Temple Mount. I am currently working on a new video that will talk about the water supply on the Temple Mount, which will be another proof that the temple was not located in the city of David, as some believe. Fast forwarding, the temple built by Solomon was destroyed in 586 BC, rebuilt by Ezra and Nehemiah in 515 and destroyed again in AD 70 by the Romans. The Jews wanted to rebuild the temple once again during the rebellion of Bar Kokhba, but they were stopped brutally by Emperor Hadrian who decided to transform Jerusalem into a new pagan city called Alia Capitolina with a temple of Jupiter on the Temple Mount. Hadrian's plan did not work, however, and Jerusalem, after losing its religious significance, became an inferior small city. Even during the Byzantine period when Christians started to pilgrim the city, the Temple Mount was not developed. Things start to change when a new religion is born in the Middle East, called Islam. It is in this time that Jerusalem is conquered by Muslims, who see the Temple Mount as an important site for their religion. First, it becomes important because Muslims also trace their heritage to Abraham and see the Temple Mount as the original place where Abraham was to sacrifice his son Isaac. Second, according to Shura 17 of the Quran, Muhammad experienced a miraculous night journey from the Great Mosque of Mecca to the Al-Aqsa Mosque where he prayed. The story says that from that place Muhammad visits the heaven where he leads prayers and raises to heaven to receive instructions from Allah. I must say here, however, that the city of Jerusalem is not mentioned by any of its names in the Quran and at that time the Al-Aqsa Mosque didn't even exist. The mosque was originally built as a small prayer house erected by Umar, the second caliph of Rashidun Caliphate 
after the Muslim conquest of the Levant in the early 7th century. It was rebuilt and expanded by the Umayyad Caliph Abdid al-Malik and finished by his son Al-Wadid in 705. The mosque was completely destroyed by an earthquake in 746 and rebuilt by the Abbasid Caliph Al-Mansur in 754. Another earthquake destroyed most of Al-Aqsa in 1033, but two years later after Fatimid Caliph Ali Az Zahir built another mosque whose outline is preserved in the current structure. The Dome of the Rock initial construction was undertaken by Umayyad Caliphate on the orders of Admit al-Malik during the Second Fitna in 691-692 to AD and it has since been situated on the top of the site of the Second Jewish Temple, which was destroyed by the Romans in 70 AD. The original dome collapsed in 1015 and was rebuilt in 1022 to 1023. So as you can see, the Dome of the Rock and the Alexa Mosque are structures that are built on the place that belonged many many years ago to the Jewish people. So if you are angry that the Jewish people are still asking about the Temple Mount, this is the reason, they have a very long heritage to this place and they believe that the most important building to their faith was located in this exact spot. But let's talk more about the Dome of the Rock. The inner dome of the Dome of the Rock is original and is made of wood. The oxidized copper dome, which looked like gold, was installed by King Itzaud in 1965. This was one of the things done in reaction to the Pope's visit to Jerusalem in 1964. The copper dome was replaced by King Husseini with the money from Saudi Arabia in the 1990s with one of pure gold because the existing one was rusting and needed to be replaced. In 1994, a new gold-plated exterior dome weighted a total of 80 kilograms was installed at the cost of 15 million dollars. This information is of course quite interesting, but what is fascinating is what we can find inside this structure. So let's see what's inside the Dome of the Rock. This picture shows the rock, the Chakra in Arabic, which is the top of Mount Moriah. The Dome of the Rock is built around this mountain top. Archaeological features cut into the rock show the foundation trench of the southern wall of the temple and the western and northern scarps at the foot of which the temple walls were built in the time of King Solomon. You can also see a very interesting rectangular depression. What is this place? Well, this depression, which was cut into the rock, might have been a place for the Ark of the Covenant. This place is located exactly in the center where the Holy of Holies would be located. Here you can see a close-up view of the emplacement where the Ark of the Covenant would be located, taken in 2008. Here again you can see again a plan of the rock showing the archaeological features discussed before. This is an isometric drawing of the rock and it makes it easier to clarify its particular details and understand the historical changes to the rock which it has been subjected to. Much damage was done to the rock during the Crusader period as attested by historians. 
The Franks, as the historians quote, such as Gabrielli, had cut pieces from the rock, some of which they carried to Constantinople and Sicily and sold it. Fulcher of Chaltries writes, the rock disfigured the temple of the Lord. This indicates that the rock has been cut away in many places before it was covered with flagstones. The rock was reduced in size and covered with flagstones during the Crusader period. The cover stones were taken away at the end of the Crusader period. This covering has been restored in this drawing. During the time of the Crusaders, an high altar was placed on the rock and only the eastern part of the rock was visible. The emplacement of the Ark is clearly visible in this photograph, which was taken in the 1920s. The depression is slightly wider than the footprint of the Ark. This plan shows that the site of the emplacement is two and a half by two cubits, while the Ark measured two and a half by 1.5 cubits. Why was the depression not made the same size as the Ark? According to Deuteronomy 31.26, the Deuteronomy scroll was placed next to the Ark. This may account for the fact that the emplacement of the Ark was made a little wider so that the scroll could be placed firmly next to the Ark and not be in danger of rolling down the mountain top. This plan shows the Herodian temple and the altar in relation to the Dome of the Rock. This makes it possible to pinpoint the location of the altar on the Temple Mount. According to the Jewish tradition, the Temple Altar was built on the same place as the David's Altar, which was built in the threshing floor of Aruna. According to the same tradition, David altar was built on the same spot as the altar which Abraham built on the threshing floor on Mount Moriah. This historical continuity is intriguing. The red area on the plain indicates where a runa threshing floor would be located. Before I finish my video, I want to give credit to Lean Rittmeyer, from whom I got a lot of this information. Make sure you check out Lean Rittmeyer's work on his webpage. Thank you for your attention. If you think this information was helpful, please consider supporting my channel. I put a lot of work into these videos. I create the 3D models myself and try to acquire quality footage to bring you closer to Israel. It takes a lot of time and sometimes it costs me money. Therefore, any help from you would be greatly appreciated. To support my channel, you can either click on the giant button on my channel main page or become a patron through the patron page. Thank you for your time and see you soon in the next episode. Shalom.